watching the late show with me as always is Satanist extraordinaire Jack Materko. Hey Andy, how's it going? I'm I'm doing well. Happy birthday, Jack Materko. Oh, well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Right. And we have our own masked singer. All right, maybe not singing, but we have Alan Whoa. here who is protecting. Oh, very nice, very nice. Uh, who is protecting his identity? So he is um, incognito here. But thank you for coming here uh, and being with us, Alan. Pleasure. And uh, of course, we have Daniel Fisk Bennett. Um, at least th I don't know if Jack's had any experiences about Facebook, but the three of us have. Alan has. I have, and Daniel Fisbenet has, we've all run afoul of Facebook in one way or another. Um, Alan, let's let's start off with you. For people who, um, you, you are the masked man. Um, yes, tell us about um, what you do in terms of the atheist community on Facebook, sir. Okay, so I, I got started on it about four years ago uh, with this page here, the scary Bible quote of the day, which, at its peak at 180,000 followers and it was killed off. Um, I was invited to the group to help create content for it. Uh, we relaunched it, went up to 35,000 within a year, killed it, relaunched it to 10,000, killed it. And then we decided to do this guy instead, the godless primate. primate. And uh, me and a collaborator from a country where Atheism is illegal, so he's also not here today. Otherwise, you know, he would be happy to contribute to this conversation. Uh, we launched that one, and it quickly shot up to 10,000 within like five, six months. And then they throttled it, and then eventually they killed it for very sort of unusual reasons. Uh, and in the course of doing this, I've been active. So I've been um, asked to edit a number of other pages, including the really big one, Atheist Community, uh, Atheist Alliance International. And they are more than just a meme page. They're a real organization. They raise funds. They help rescue atheists around the world, hire lawyers, et cetera. Uh, also a uh, contributor to Atheist Vagabond, the only other one, oops, there it is, the only other one that uh, produces um, uh, original content, makes its own memes as opposed to copy and paste, sort of like the work that I did. Uh, then uh, many other ones to whom I've helped. I've either helped them or I've contributed uh, material uh, for their work. Um, currently, I am uh, editing about five atheist pages, some smaller ones as well. Uh, and really what I try to do is either put news for people to consume or generate content myself and mm -hmm. in the form of memes or short articles or something like that. But that's, that's what I've done. And in the course of doing this, uh, as this show is covering, I've run into a lot of trouble. Right. I, I want to say that I got a lot of laughs out of uh, the Godless Primate. That was a Thanks. very, very funny stuff, there, sir. Very funny. Uh, always enjoy well, we, the material. We we look up to you quite a bit <laughs> so, with with your column and your material. So uh, that, that's been a source of inspiration, to be very, very frank. Well, thanks, thanks, Daniel Fitz Bennett. Tell us hey, how we doing. doing. Hey, how you doing, man? So yeah, I, uh, I am the founder of AAPN, Atheist Against Pseudoscientific Nonsense. Uh, we've been around since January of 2015. Um, we have a website and everything else. Uh, but since Facebook started changing its platform back in, I want to say, late 2019, um, I have seen a plethora of groups dropping off like flies. Um, we lost one of our subsidiary groups and one of our spinoffs uh, atheist memes and nerdy things that had 32,000 people in the group um, which that was quite a shock to have that happen and even now we are still getting notifications from Facebook saying that it removed content from that group which has been completely killed off they you can't post in it you can't do anything in it but they are still pulling stuff off of it um, our platform on AAPN, we had to significantly change how we were doing things. Um, we had to be more, uh, I want to say covert um, and more subliminal in the way that we are poking at religion. Mm -hmm. we, I mean, we still do it, obviously, but um, we, we, we haven't been able to be as brazen as we used to be in the past. Um, and that was 
quite the shocker. I think it was us seeing other, you know, groups fall apart that we didn't want to lose our large following as well. Um, because we have a website and everything and we actually contribute money as well, which yeah. we don't want to lose our activism. Mm-hmm. Um, because, uh, we, we help fund on occasion a couple schools, uh, and yeah. that, that, that does, that, those people depend on that. <laughs> yeah. So when, when it comes down to those kinds of things, you know, it's worrisome. And I've been talking to Lance Days, who is now the uh, board elected um, president of AAPN. I'm just the founder. Uh, so I, I'm more of a figurehead at this point. Um, anyhow, oh, my computer is finally done updating. Anyhow, um, yeah, I'll get that logged into so I'm not holding my phone anymore. Um, but yeah, Lance and I have been kind of moving a lot of our operation capabilities to our standalone website because we are concerned that uh, given the nature of AAPN, since it is not one of the things that distinguished it, it was not your standard atheist meme page. Yeah. We don't just we, we we don't just poke fun at religion. We poke fun at pretty much anything that was unsubstantiated, from alternative medicine to um, any kind of woo. Mm-hmm. And we just kind of clumped it all together and just said, "Hey, here is some fun skepticism with that atheist twist, so we don't have to tiptoe around anything." And that's what made it take off back in 2015. Um, I st- we still worry about the group. Yeah. Um, uh, the AAPN group, which started it all um, back in January of 2015, uh, it still has 26.6 thousand mem- active members mm-hmm. in it. And we've had to put up a lot of safeguards. Um, we have to, ha- we've have a lot of admins and moderators, you know, m- way more than a normal group typically has. And the, we have to pretty much go through that group like a fine tooth comb just because we are concerned yeah. that Facebook is just going to take another swipe at it. Um, uh, I, I can tell you is that I run uh, laughing disbelief. It's got about 30,000 it, it followers. It's much smaller than, than the other pages you guys are mentioning. And um, I, I'm cautious about what I post there. Um, I know that I can't monetize my page there if, for people who are watching their ways of monetizing a page that's pretty much gone for me. They don't even, yeah, that's not even on the uh, question with Facebook. Um, I run atheist comedy burrito that you can see on Alan's uh, background there. I've only gotten into a little bit of trouble with Facebook because I, I'm pretty conservative on that. I, I okay every single post personally that does get um, on that, on that group. And I also do a left wing, just politically left wing, not really too atheisty. Um, and so, yeah, I've been I, I've been hearing these stories, and I've been getting more and more conservative about what what I post or why I allow to be posted on on those on those Facebook pages and groups. Jack, I don't see a lot of big Satan on Facebook. Do you guys just have your own? Uh, you know, like every chapter has their own. Uh, generally, has their own group and page and stuff. I know a lot of them that that big purge that happened a couple months ago. Mm. I know several of their chapters had issues with that and had their accounts taken down, but I think all of them eventually got them restored in that one. Well, well, it's interesting because because, you know, well, being able to threaten religious discrimination carries a lot of weight, you know? That's what I was going to say. I was going to ask whether or not uh, the Satanic Temple has certain privileges, maybe, that garden variety atheists don't have because you are a religion. I don't know if I call it, but, well, I, it, this is all speculation, right? Because I don't know how, how Facebook's people handle any of this. But, I mean, I think... If, if I was working for Facebook and it was my job to handle complaints from people whose pages got taken down and they saw an organization as litigious as DST come up and say, hey, what the hell? I, I'd definitely give more weight to erring on the side of caution when reinstating that page. You know? that, yeah. That's just me talking to if somebody I, I who was a at Facebook whose job it was to deal with that. You know? If I may jump in... Uh... We utilize with American Atheists because I also work with American Atheists. We utilize TST a lot 
because um, a lot of times politicians won't want to listen to us because we're atheists. What kind of skin in the game do we have? So then this, we then we uh, go call our local TST chapter and I'm like, well, our friends over here. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not a religion. Well, guess what? We've got one right here handy. Right yeah. here. <laughs> They're in our back pocket. <laughs> yeah. And they'd love to have a word with you. <laughs> Jack, uh, to your point about, you know, people at Facebook looking at things, um, my suspicion is that there is no one looking. It's expensive to do the mm -hmm. monitoring. And a lot of it has been switched to algorithms. And just yesterday, there was an article that they claim 80% of the content removed now is done solely with algorithms. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I'm sure that most oh. of the content is, but like, you know, somewhere down the line, eventually you can get to an actual person to talk to. It's just they're not paid very well and they're yeah. ridiculously overworked and there's way more stuff that they can actually fit like just actually look at and do QAQC on the algorithm for right there's have just you gone that far yeah. have you actually ever spoken to a person uh n no I've never had a need for that for like a Facebook page. I do have some friends who work at Facebook and and yeah. uh that's what I hear that kind of content moderation stuff is just a, a you know, name and address that job will chew Just you up. <laughs> so, so what happened with, with you, Alan? Did did the pages just did the groups just disappear? So it, it happened because they thought I, I was a bot. So initially, they wanted to verify because when we launched uh, the Godless Primate, I had about three thousand original memes that I had done for scary Bible quotes. So I just started posting, and. Uh, the number of likes and followers just started spiking up really quickly. So then they were concerned that this is a meme factory in Russia someplace getting paid by Putin. I don't know what they're thinking. So they, uh, you know, just like the, the the typical initial response that this has to be done out of uh, someplace. And, and they wanted verification. And the verification procedure is quite scary because I remember several years back reading when uh, Saudi Arabia arrested a number of dissidents yeah. And they did it because they had spies working at Twitter. And the Twitter verification process of the accounts revealed their identity. Mm. So Facebook demanded a driver's license, yep. billing mm -hmm. statements. When I provided those, they kept asking again and again. And then they asked for a passport. I mean, can you imagine? And so, and just as I sent that, a few days later, this Twitter case came up, and one of the people who had quit Twitter said, the devil is in the verification procedure. Once you go through that, you're exposed. And I yeah. thought to myself, what the heck? You know, I just showed everything to these guys, and, and I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, things cooled off for a while, but then they cited violations, and some of the violations, you can tell there's no... Uh, proper review of this stuff because it wasn't egregious. And we did egregious stuff when I was with Scary Bible Quote, but this one was much more tame. You know, it was humor. Now, yeah. that's, that's, that's another issue to the whole thing because, I mean, you know, you've just got people who are out hunting down these yeah. pages and, and reporting, reporting content just because they're trying to get the page, page. taken down. Shut down. Shut down. Shut down. Yeah. 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 Uh, so... Uh, so I think, I think we have an echo. echo. Maybe Daniel, it's on your end. It, it, it was a little bit of temporary feedback because I had this going at the same time. Okay, but now that's okay. okay. I don't hear I don't hear the echo anymore, so that's great. Thank you. So um, I think the thing that pushed Godless Primate over the edge was a satirical meme that I made, and it was some KKK people holding an anti-Jewish sign, and I took that sign and I erased it and I rewrote uh, white, proud, and with superior genes, J-E-A-N-S. I've seen that one. <laughs> okay, so that was mine. And you can still see it says uh, the godless primate on the sleeve. It, it caught on like wildfire. They said, no, this is hate speech. So they shut that off. And then after it was removed, they cited it again. It's like, you guys just removed it. And then a month later, the same meme, you're being cited for hate speech. And then a month and a half ago, two more times, that same meme. It's like, you guys removed it. And then they said, 
we try to recruit people that we posted jobs and we never post i never posted jobs one of my rules was i will not take money for doing this i will not sell bracelets or t-shirts for doing this I, I did this because i thought in my mind i was a form of activism that i that i supported and so they were looking for as if they were looking for a reason to shut this thing down and they did uh, is anyone else hearing an echo besides me or is it all just in my head no i am <laughs> is it coming from my end yeah it wasn't starting until you switched over to your laptop we can blame it on gates and and how's that okay yeah so there's no more there there is no more um echo there okay so, okay yeah well you're you're muted Dan. but now you're muted yes so we don't hear the echo but on the other hand you are muted daniel but now is right. it echoing now it's, that depends uh, let's see what happens when somebody talks right it, okay. it sounds like the uh yeah. The auto noise canceling is trying to do its thing. I think it's your mic is just picking up your speakers. Hold on, let's do something over here. Well, right. easiest fix would be for you to just mute and unmute when you're talking, you know? Yeah. Power on. All right, hold on. I'll, I'll, I'll mute myself and get myself going. It's the miracle of a live show, everybody, right here. <laughs> you know what I have found frustrating, and I'm going to just be blunt, I'm, I'm, and I've said this before on, on the morning show, is when... When, when Facebook when has location, I can still hear the echo. Dark on it. Sorry. All right. I'm muting. All right. So what uh, Facebook has taken away one of the pieces of content that I approved onto Atheist Comedy Burrito. And I wanted to see what the content was because I okay a lot of content on Atheist Comedy Burrito every single day. And I don't know which one is, which one was uh, one against community standards. So I try to click on you know, what I did wrong, you know, find out more. And it says, well, we can't show you the content that goes against community standards. <laughs> I've seen that many times. I've lived that. <laughs> like, How can I, I, I what's I the purpose I, of the feedback I, I, process? If you can't learn from the mistake, you know, or the perceived mistake. Yeah. I, I feel like I'm like eight years old back in my Baptist parents house, you know, it's like, so what did I do wrong? <laughs> I just did it wrong. <laughs> The other thing is that they refer you to the community standards, right? And then you click, I have gone through that. And you start reading this thing and it is so vague. And like, which one did I violate? Yeah. And first of all, where the fuck, excuse me, is this community? There is no community. It's a group of factions on, on, on Facebook. Everybody knows that. There's a thousand communities, each with their own standards. You're putting a standard on everybody. It is extremely vague. No one ever knows which segment, which paragraph, which... Uh, line item they violated, you know, for getting their content removed and penalized. Yeah, it it provides zero value in the feedback process. Yes, um, I think that I have learned more about community standards by having comedian friends get banned. To tell you the truth, yeah, you know, Nathan yeah. Tibble, who was just on the show um, a little while ago, found out that he gets uh, he got banned for saying what for writing white trash, and that got him a thirty day ban. It's like, well, I don't usually use that term anyway, but I definitely don't know not to use that on anywhere on Facebook. Yeah, I, I I've seen a lot of people get zucker punched for a lot of re really ridiculous things. Um, one of my uh, friends, Kenny from Canada. Um, use the term effing Canadians. He's from Canada and he got a 30 day ban for that. And, yeah. uh, and it was the irony. I, I said fucking Americans one time. I got a 30 day ban for that. I'm from America. <laughs> so, but what, what gets me is legitimate hate groups um, are able to spew their vitriolic content um, and not suffer that. We, we see anti trans, anti anti LGBT. And just add the anti whatever. I've seen blatant white supremacist pages that I've been reporting for a long time. Just and I keep tabs on them just to see. It's like okay, well, if we're getting this, why isn't that happening? So I keep tabs on those pages just so I could you know watch so I could have a comparative analysis. And lo and behold, those pages are still posting uh, things, which which gets me. Sorry about that. That's Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, I, I bet you've had this experience as well. That's where somebody, one of the things that bothers me. Oh. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, uh, Alan, yeah. go ahead. I was going to say, Daniel, you probably have had this experience as well, where somebody copies a meme, puts it in your group or page, you get banned or penalized for it. The original source from where they copied it is still on there. No problem. <laughs> so it really has to, it has less to do with the content, but more to do with who reported it. Or if a number of people gang up and en masse do reporting against a certain page and then they can basically take it down. Hmm. I have found that anything that has to do with Islam on Facebook is um, I, I really think about it. I, 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 Daniel has to run. His uh, son is calling him, so I'm going to take him off for a little bit, but yep. he'll probably come back yep. on um, family stuff. But I found that anything that has to do with Islam is a third rail on Facebook. I mean, I, I agree. Think, yeah. Um, it's just called this. You know, I was looking through the community standards today and Islamophobia. And, and, and I, of all, you know, especially during comedy, I, I think about not punching down. But there is a difference between, and I'm preaching to the choir here, but there's a difference between criticizing the faith and attacking people. There, there, there's a difference, but Facebook doesn't see that. Facebook doesn't see that. You can almost stereo, uh, make stereotypical comments about the reactions you get from various faith faiths when you post comments up. And I hate to make that stereotypical comment, but it's like you get private messages from Muslims when you put anti-Islam things that are just angry, yeah. really angry. Uh, if I put comments that are uh, anti-Jewish as a faith, not as an ethnic group, then I get comments that I'm being anti-Semitical. It's like, yeah. no, I'm criticizing a faith or I'm criticizing something that Israel has done, you know, as a country. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Christians threatening that I would go to hell, their hell. Yeah. You know, because, you know, so this, the anger comes in comments sent to the page and you guys have uh, managed those pages. You can get direct messages. And so like, you know, I've seen this before. And then as soon as you get a lot of them from one of those groups, you know that there's going to be a whipping coming from Facebook any moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause they're, yeah. Cause they're going to have an organized assault and yeah and 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 people have copied everything and on this page. messages yeah people have copied and pasted messages from inside some of those groups that say let's get 20 to 30 people go to this page mm -hmm. and report them and we can bring them down so i've i've in the past received screenshots of people who are basically spying in those groups uh in, there is evidence of on mass uh sort of ganging up against mm -hmm. particular pages or groups and I have a feeling those bots are have very low discrimination. And so if they hit 25, 30, or 50, they go, oh, that's it. It's got to be bad. Yep. It's got Interesting. So, Alan, is there um, a size? Is, is, is like a group, a certain size, let's say 5,000 followers or 10,000 or 20,000, is there some kind of magical number where Facebook becomes much more active in watching what you do? Um, very early on, I think at 250, uh, when you first start a group or a page, at 250, you get a notification. There's uh, additional uh, uh, verification about location and where the people are who are posting in the group or the editors at, at about 500, I think. Uh, but, you know, Scary Bible Quote had over 180,000 people. And, uh, you know, it was, when it was shut down, it was gone. Yeah. And they never, nobody could reach anybody at Facebook. There was no um, email or contact, no support from anybody. It's just like you fill out these forms that they say you can contest this decision and and you wait to hear back. And sometimes it's immediate, says no. Sometimes you don't hear at all. Sometimes they take you to links that don't work. You know, it's just like, how is this company worth hundreds of billions of dollars where they can't even get their own links to work and they're in a technology company? Mm -hmm. But it seems like they just have no interest you know, it's as if this thing is really superficial. They they want to make sure that they do what is needed in order for them to keep their advertising platform going, and they will just sweep people off the platform left and right if they feel it's a threat. I I think it's really an aspect of having such a monopoly, right? There oh. there there is no other social media platform like Facebook that does what Facebook does. Twitter is much smaller than Facebook, and Twitter is a totally different beast. 
Pinterest is totally different from Facebook. Yeah. Uh, TikTok is so totally different. You know, Facebook is a thing unto itself with no real competition. So yeah, when when you have a monopoly like that, um, they can pretty much do what they want. They have, um, and uh, I think everybody says you know uh, freedom of speech. It's not a freedom of speech thing. I totally agree. It's a c company. It's a private enterprise. They can set their own rules. But what I hope to get is some level of transparency and clarity about the rules. Like you said, you know, you, you go there and you go, okay, which post was it? One of your posts violated, which one? At least let me see which post uh, triggered this violation so that I know how to self-censor. Yeah, well, that's exactly it. I mean, I, I know that, you know, Jack and I both are on Patheos, or bloggers on Patheos, and they are pretty straightforward about what we can do and what the, we can't do. And uh, I love that because now I get to know how to push, right? Where to push, how to push, what words to use, what words not to use. But on Facebook, it's just this star chamber, right? This, this, and, and yeah, it's where we're 26 minutes in. I'm going to use the term Kafka. I'm going to use the term Kafka-esque kind of experience that you don't know what's going on. So, so now, what, yeah. what's that? It's a black box, you know. It, it is a black box. Yeah. It is. So so how do you conduct your business now on Facebook? Well, um, I first first I just lost all my energy. When when we lost the last page, I thought, you know, I'm just gonna quit. It's just not worth it. And then just around that same time, people at Atheist Alliance International came to me and said, you want, you want to be a contributor. And they're a big page. They're almost 200,000. And they're a legitimate organization with a board. Oh, yeah. uh, Krauss is on, um, you know, on their board of directors. And this guy's on TV all the time. So they're legitimate. And I said, OK. So obviously, their tolerance for getting edgy is very low. Uh, so I started just putting content on there for them, uh, more branded content. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it, now I have a collection of about 4,000 memes that I've done and quotes that I've researched. And so I can just pull things out. And I would say half of them are unfit for that particular page. But still, <laughs> um, um, you know, if, if you want to uh, get a rise, if you will, to pardon the expression, you can always put like an anti-Hindu meme. And it'll just go like wildfire. <laughs> <laughs> just like that's one of the really and all these atheist hindus show up you know to right. uh, defend <laughs> okay well, that's interesting that's interesting i found that whenever i poked fun at at hinduism on on my blog um there are a lot of uh prickly prickly hindus out there who people of, of that faith who are quick to defend it yeah and uh there is a transgender former hindu who helps with the page mm. uh, and uh, their contribution is really good they help us uh, research and get it right but that person has told me that in india now these radical hindus are pretty much akin to the radical muslims we saw 10 15 years ago yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's gotten it's gotten like that a lot of people aren't aware of how radical Hinduism got energized by by Modi, by the yep. prime minister. Yeah. Um, so uh, back to your point about what do I do now? I contribute a little bit to that group. Uh, I still contribute to uh, the faith, uh, Faithless Vagabonds group. The page is gone, but the group is still there. Even um, um, the, the Godless Primate has a group that's still active. I put some content there from time to time, but mostly I enjoy reading other people's work, including yours. To be oh, thank you. No, and uh, um, one of the pages that I like is the Atheist uh, and Agnostic Society page. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't do anything for them, but uh, it's very civil, sort of mature conversation. So I go there from time to time. Um, uh, one of the ones that I like in, into which I've shared your posts is the Australian. There we go. Australian atheist with a sense of humor. That's a great page. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I just I just enjoy more than uh, that I used to, which is fun in itself. I just go and read up stuff. Right, right, right. Do you, do you ever go on other uh, social media platforms? No, um, I am um, actually not on any other social media platform at all. And I 
joined Facebook but just a little over four years ago, driven in mostly by politics, just conversations mm -hmm. online. And then uh, I stumbled across something that was near and dear to me, the subject. And uh, um, I never went out looking to become uh, editors anywhere, but as I was putting comments out and putting original content up, people came and asked me, you know, you want to do some work for us, et cetera. And my rule always was no, no money. I don't want to get paid. I don't want to ask for money. Uh, I don't want to sell things because there are pages that sell bands and t-shirts and stuff. I'm like, that's not, that's not why I'm here. Right. right, right. That's good. I, I already get $10 a like from Putin. Why would I want to do that? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. Um, where, where do you see it going, Alan? Where, where, where do you see Facebook in terms of atheist pages um, in the future? Well, I, there's another purge coming. And uh, I, I see it uh, as something bigger than a purge of atheist pages. It's a, it's a purge of uh, expressions that are not popular whether they're legitimately not popular because they're wrong, like white supremacy, or not popular because they're atheism and it's uh, uh, frowned upon, or uh, what they believe satanic uh, 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 satanism really stands for, so those kind of things, and then it's frightening to them. So mm -hmm. they want to bring it down to a middle of the curve where it is easier to monetize their network, their platform for advertisers. Everything that's in the either sides of this curve is a threat to their business model. Mm. That's, I think, exactly what they see it. There is no love. Listen, I, I have very little respect for this guy who launched this thing because he did it to rate t tits and ass. That's what it was, right? He did it. In, it's it's, oh, it's not right, like right. he had a vision. Yeah, like, yeah. It was not like the guys at Google. It's not even like you know Tesla. I'm not sure I like that guy at all. But, it's, but at least these people had a vision. They wanted to do something. Those, you know, He's really lucky that he has extremely smart people working for him, like Sandberg. She's brilliant. Uh, so these people have guided this thing that he really got lucky with. And you know, they're still milking it for nothing other than taking our time and selling it to the advertisers. Everything that's on the other side, uh, both sides of this uh, middle curve of ideas and uh, content is a threat to that. And so they're going to cut it off from both sides, extreme right, extreme left, extreme religious and extreme, you know, eighth, you know, so militant atheism, if you will, if that's, that really exists. So they're going to cut it back as much as possible until it's uh, very, uh, very much sanitary. It's a sanitary space. Oh, right. Because they want it to, they want it to be like the, like, you know, like the casino experience, right? They want people to get onto Facebook and lose track of time and just stay there Bingo. and experience, you know, like, and just sit there and watch the ads roll by because that's yeah. how they're making a buck, right? Yeah. Uh, no clocks in the casinos, you know, all the things. Yeah. You want. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah. so anything, any post that can make somebody, you know, rage quit and put their phone down. And, and maybe I'm pushing a conspiracy here, but they've actually gone through the trouble of making it difficult to do some things that were very easy to do on Facebook because now that it forces you to spend more time. So if you've been an editor of a page, you knew how it easy it was in the past to save a post as draft, to save it mm -hmm. for future publication, or to immediately publish, or to edit it afterwards. Now you have to go to this other platform, the creative, yeah. uh, Creator st Studio, that is extremely slow, Yeah, takes a lot more clicks and time, and it doesn't do anything more. No. Nothing more. It, it, so, it's, but that, it's, it's very frustrating. It just slows yeah, down. So, yeah, really so does. basically what used to take five minutes now takes 15 to 20 minutes, but for them, that's just another metric number of minutes you spend per day on their platform is what they're selling. You know what they're going to do? They're going to they're, they're gonna build that out and then they're going to sell uh, Facebook Creator Studio certifications like yeah. like Adobe does to yeah. prove that, you know, or, or you know, Microsoft uh, certification. Even right. the way you used to be able to mark all your notifications red or delete them mm -hmm. all. Yeah, was so much simpler. Now it takes an additional step. And if it takes three seconds and you do it 10 times a day, that's 30 seconds, multiply by their one and a half billion or whatever count is viewers. Now the number of hours is astronomical. And yeah. so you've spent more time on their platform. It is all intended to get you stuck in there. And what they don't want is people on this extremes 
uh, interfering with the people who are there to actually enjoy spending whatever number of hours they do spend on that platform. It sounds like it's gonna become uh, like Branson, Missouri in terms of a beige kind of entertainment experience. Or, or intellectual experience. <laughs> Yeah. A beige entertainment experience. I like but, that. But Andy, what about you? Do you do you, do you, do you feel the same? I mean, you. Uh, I follow all three of your pages, by the way. Yeah. So. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. You know, for me, um, once again, I've become much more conservative about what I do. And, and to tell you the truth, because Facebook is so bad at identifying satire, I can only post my satirical pieces on my Facebook page once. Because the algorithm, I figured, you know, I figured out that the algorithm can't catch me if I post something on my main page once. But if I try to post it again, that's when it can be flagged as fake news, yeah. even though it's it's clearly a satirical page. So um, I because I've gotten banned before by by like posting one of my classic posts, one of my classic uh, stories on on laughing and disbelief, and it's like sorry fake news you, you you can't you're in facebook uh, 30 days and so that really does limit my reach um so what i do i just have to create new content post memes or uh, post videos like this one on, on the page so i have to be once again prudent conservative and i really have to think about what i'm doing on the page because i know they don't like me <laughs> they don't yeah. like me I, I, I can say one thing that every single social media platform I am on, whether it's the blog or um, I irritate people and well, that's like, that's your job, right? That's your job as a comedian is to push limits. And yeah, yeah, I have to be very prudent about what I do. Yeah, and also that's... on YouTube, I have to tell you most, a lot of, not most of my videos, but some of my videos get demonetized. They're just considered not appropriate for advertisers. Yeah. And, and so, um, yeah, it's, it, it, it is a difficult um, slog. That's what it is. It's a slog. And so uh, the other thing that concerns me with the platform is that leak of information about who the admins are. And when it comes to a subject such as atheism, it is outlawed in a number of countries. It oh, is yeah. punishable mm -hmm. by death in a number of countries. I mean, the person who started uh, the, uh, the Godless Primate page with me, he's in a country where it is punishable by death. And he's brilliant. He's a guy who studied uh, uh, at a uh, US uh, Baptist school in the South. I mean, he actually was in it before he was out of it. Yeah. So he knows his, his content. He can argue. He goes in there under his own name and he gets into discussions with people. And very funny guy. He, he yeah. is really the genius of the humor, uh, if you will. For a while, he was buying SIM cards from illegal aliens in his country so that he can plug it into a phone and dial into Facebook because they had arrested people for Facebook posts and they had imprisoned them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when Facebook came out with this policy that we're going to put the location of the admins, he's like, what am I gonna do now? I said, don't. So he just sends me stuff by messenger and he says, what, can we put this one up? And I'm like, all right, I'll put it up. But you know, that, uh, is, is this the tool that's going to create information liberation for the world and uh, you know break through these things? Absolutely not. It's actually contributing into it in some places, not everywhere. In some countries, it's actually making it worse. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with that too. There was a big hope during the 90s, wasn't there, that yeah. um, the internet was going to liberate us. Yeah. Kind of utopianism, this kind of hippie utopianism from the 60s in the 90s. It's like, well, this is what's going to free us. And there's definitely been a lot of information exchanged. There, there's been a, a freeing of information, but but it's as if the institutions have now caught up with it. The institutions have caught up with the technology and and market forces are just throwing this big blanket down on us in terms of what we can say, when we can say it. Yeah. Well, I guess there's also the, the, like the core of the issue there is, is yes, there's been this, this liberation of, of information exchange, but there's also just for, for every good piece of information, there's 10 pieces of disinformation floating around, you know? Yeah. Well, I think a number of bad guys realize that because it's such an effective and efficient way of disseminating information initially, like you said, uh, there was the sense of idealism that you're going to liberate the world with uh, 
unrestricted access to all the information in the world. That's going to make all of us smarter. And then in came QAnon lately, but before then, countries actively, you know, all the bad countries, including the good countries, have agents online that are continuously flooding social media and news with information because the battle for public opinion globally is on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Now, whether that battle is for social influence or political influence or any other kind of influence, it's going to take place on the internet. And so you have governmental forces now involved in creating content and writing comment back. And it was, there was one of them that they took away a while. It was called, it was called the uh, megaphone dictation tool or something like that. It was a country in the Middle East that had it. That was basically a way to comment on all news articles in favor of that country. <laughs> just they they created an app for it so um just checking out what's going on in the chat and um so this is theo say you are workers and consumers of so social media but you aren't an owner uh, not yet yeah, you're not actually owning possessing any part of the social media experience you're just kind of there you don't have any real rights, mm -hmm. no. and um, you know it, it's 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 a very surf dummy in a way, isn't it? Um, I, I have the luxury of not having to need to monetize this, but mm. uh, but for you, for you, it's a part of your uh, your livelihood, you know. Uh, okay. But and you've been respected now, so um, if you cannot at least get something back by putting content which takes people's time and allows them therefore to sell advertising then it's really unfair to those who are trying to use the platform in a way that better uh, improves and betters their life or generates income for them that's that's kind of unfair you know so and then you do become a surf or you yeah. might as well be in a gulag you know the uh, electronic gulag if you will right right, right. <laughs> Oh, working in the mean mimes. <laughs> <laughs> we like to work in mean mime. <laughs> I find cat picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, for me, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm going to be doing on Facebook in, in five years. Uh, five years seems like it, it's, it's a, an eternity away for me. Uh, I mean, been, the last four years felt like 20, so. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're right about that, Jack. And, and in terms of um, presidential elections, I mean, um, if the Republicans get in in two years or in four years, who knows what the landscape's going to look like then. Yeah, And there's, um, there is still, like, I mean, one thing about Facebook, you know, n narrowing down their, their content spectrum into, you know, more watered down generic keep the keep the top of the bell curve happy kind of stuff is that lack of interesting exciting content is going to push people away from using facebook in the long run it's going to become another myspace if they end up doing that long enough right yeah it's it's not a feasible um sustainable strategy in the long term because you're right another social media platform well and remember how big myspace was myspace was like the ball, Huge. yeah, with the balls for a long time. Well, yeah, and, so. and other different ways of creating content, right? Like, I mean, like TikTok is all those short little videos, and uh, you know, I've seen people kind of playing around with audio only social oh, media yeah. sites and that kind of thing. Like, there, there's different ideas out there that people are going to find their own niches for. Yeah, I think a lot of it too is that I know that Zuckerberg and a bunch of other social media giants giants were at um, at the Capitol testifying in front of Congress the maybe about a week ago, and I think they're afraid. I think a lot of people at Google, at Facebook, they are afraid because you you know about Section two hundred and thirty. Section two hundred and thirty basically allows these social media platforms not to get sued for anything that's actually on the social media platform. And uh, I, I think Zuckerberg and a lot of other folks in social media, they are afraid that if the Democrats or the Republicans decide to take away their liability, you know, basically make them liable for what's on their social media platform, then they know that they're dead in the water. They, they yeah. know they can't, they can't do anything to um, 
really monitor this much content. So I don't know, maybe banning all these pages and groups, they're just trying to uh, show people on Capitol Hill, look, we're doing something. Yeah, but Jack's point is spot on. Um, I mean, we the only reason Parler came to existence is because uh, people on the far right felt like they were losing their voice on on all the mainstream social media platforms and, and it just mushroomed until it was axed. Um, no tears for me, but um, there is that risk that it becomes so bland as mm -hmm. they migrate towards the center, it becomes like network television of 25 years ago. That's exactly what I thought. Everything's gonna be three's company. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and or like I said, Grants in Missouri, and um, yeah. that's not yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, but you know, I, I, there are very clever people working in these organizations. They'll find a way to monetize as much as possible, and I think they will continuously adjust how wide they make that center of the bell curve to make sure that people are always flooding into their network. Mm. But at the end, it is technology, um, and it has an appeal to a particular demographic and in much of the developed world, Facebook is where your grandparents go. Middle yeah. aging grandparents, you know? Yes. And uh, so, uh, and there are other platforms, Instagram doesn't have the same ability to disseminate information and engage people in comments like Facebook does. Right. And the other platform that they have, WhatsApp, it's really, they have a difficult time monetizing what they've purchased there. And they're going to basically kill it off as they have. And I think a lot of people have already switched to Telegram and Signal because they don't want to have uh, that information sharing that Facebook has announced that they will do starting May, I believe. It is, if, if there is a way to take the profit motive out of social media to make it a functional non-profit, I know this is just a hypothetical, would that go a long way in solving the problem? Well, uh, you mean like a Wikipedia model? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Signal, the messaging platform works that way. It's a um, open source uh, foundation. Uh, there is no profit motive. Uh, you donate if you want to, much like Wikipedia. Uh, it behooves uh, some philanthropic billionaire not to uh, consider that uh, and uh, do something good for for all of us. Mm. You know, that's uh, we are the product, right? In social media, it's our time. Um, right, right, yeah. And then I, they take that time and they sell it to uh, advertisers. If we've got these people out there, we'll, we'll you know, yeah. this is what we can offer you. I, I don't want to sound like a bomb throwing Bolshevik, but you know, maybe the profit motive is is part of the problem. Maybe the profit motive with, with social media. You, you can sound like a Menshevik. You know, they were all I want to be <laughs> I want to be Martov. I want to be a Menshevik. Yeah. That's what I hey, yeah. hey, hey someone People who gets forget, it. Someone they forget who gets the Mensheviks. It's not fair, you know. <laughs> someone who gets it. All right, yeah. all right. Yeah. So um yeah, yeah. So um yeah, Menshevik, you know, happily, yeah. happily a Menshevik. Um yeah. yeah. No, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, I'd never thought about it, but I'm thinking on the spot now about what you said about the pro profit motive. And I think it does make a difference. Yeah. Um, if, you're if you're motivated by ad revenue and you want to keep this pristine pool of 2 billion users, or whatever they are now, one and a half, two billion, so that you can sell ads, mm. uh, then you have to make a lot of sacrifices along the way. So we need. So what we need is is some rather philanthropic billionaire to go to American public media and have them build a Facebook clone that is publicly supported content. I think. To, I mean, that's how Signal got started. Uh, there was an initial endowment of fifty million dollars. Yeah, it, you know, yeah. I, if if three guys just shooting the crap here. I mean, not dumb guys, but when they have three guys on, on YouTube talking about it, there has to be someone with a lot of money thinking about it at least, yeah. or at least, you know, someone so. contemplating yeah. it because, um, you know, that could, that could go a long way. And if you are someone with a lot of money who, who is interested in this, call us. We would <laughs> like some of your money, please. 
But didn't Microsoft actually uh, look into buying um, TikTok? Yes. So, so basically, yeah. it's not going to be from them. They're not, they're not going to be the ones Microsoft, coming. I, I don't know if it was Microsoft, but yeah. Well, they were talking about like selling yeah. off at least the, the U.S. division to try and get around Trump wanting to ban it as a Chinese company right. kind of thing, something like that. Tesla Ranger says there's 2.8 billion monthly active users as of the 31st of December, 2020. That's that's a lot of users. Yeah, that's a lot yeah. of users. And I wonder how many of those are real people. I, I think it's fair question. to say that at least a third of those are second accounts or, uh, you know, troll accounts or at least, at least. And, you know, and there's a lot of people who want to unplug from Facebook. You hear it all the time, especially on Facebook. <laughs> You know, they're, they're, they're like, yeah, if there was only an alternative, I, I think a lot of people would, would jump ship if there was. I'll tell you a funny story, though. I'm going on a tangent and I'm not related to what we've been talking about. Sure, sure. When, we first, when we first had scary Bible quote of the day, because the group was, the page was so big, 180,000, we were getting all kinds of messages. And there were people there begging us to say, can you please ban me? I am a Christian. I am heavily drawn towards your content. You know, I'm afraid that I may become an atheist. Please ban me so I lose my temptation to come to your page. <laughs> so, <laughs> this, That's great, dude. I mean, that yeah. just shows you how important this kind of work is, to tell you the yeah. truth. Because you don't know who your audience is. You never, I mean, you can look at your analytics, but you never know exactly who you're talking to or who's hearing your message and how it resonates with them. Yeah. In, in terms of countries, do you see any specific countries where you see there's a rise of uh, uh, disbelief for uh, 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 you know, people who are just no longer intent, uh, either either atheist or agnostic or irreligious? Do you, do you see that? Because I see a few. I want to see if it's the same for you. Um, you know, for me personally, because I do mostly humor, I get a lot of Commonwealth countries, to tell you the truth. I get a lot of Australians. I get um, a, a lot of Brits, a lot of people up in Canada. Um, they, they, because I have that kind of sensibility, comedically speaking. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what, you know, would be interesting if Hemant was here, for an example, from the Friendly Atheist and where his, his audience comes from in terms of nationalities, you know, in, in terms of countries, because uh, I'd be interested if they came from places like Pakistan or Saudi Arabia or or um, Turkey, but I, I would be curious about that. I, I'll I, tell you I, at at some point for a good long while when Andy and I were doing the Naked Diner podcast, the Naked Diner podcast was really big in Belgium for some reason, Interesting. which was weird, but that's the only like big outlier that I remember. So in the big groups uh, or big, big pages both uh, where I've looked at uh, the insights feature of uh, Facebook where you can yeah. drill deep and see, you know, where your where your audience are and who they are, what languages they speak. Philippines is always in the top four or five. The Philippines, heavily yeah. Catholic country. That's what that is. Yeah. So that one, uh, India and Pakistan are always in the top seven or eight these days. Yes. Uh, no, no Arab country. I've never seen an Arab country. Um, mm. But. Um, Something I suspect something is going on in the Philippines with the with the youth because the demographic of Facebook in Philippines is also much younger than the demographic uh, the demographic we have in the U.S. So it's not the same older generation. It's young people on it. Right, right, right. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we've been coming up to an hour. I, I was hoping that Daniel would come back, but I guess he's got some kind of family thing going on. Um, I guess we should go on final thoughts or getting close to final thoughts. Alan, was there a topic you wanted us to talk about, but we didn't get around to specifically about Facebook too, or anything else for that matter? Was there something you, you just thought were, was worth talking about, but we never got around to it? <clears throat> well, um, I, I think for me, a challenge has been maintaining my motivation to contribute. And so, yeah. Um, what helps uh, is that those few pages that are still out there creating new content, uh, it would help if they don't give up because we sort of feed off of each other's energy. Um, yours in particular, I look at and I say, okay, this is all new content, original content. So it draws me to your page. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm less interested in the cut and paste or the copy and paste uh, memes, you know. Yeah. 
that really helps. Uh, and so if people are out there watching or people are, are you know, going through these uh, various pages, support the pages that make new content. That really makes a difference versus the cut and paste shops. There are some that are in the hundreds of thousands, you know, followers. But uh, if you really want to support what we're doing, and if you want to get the message out, support the pages and the groups that create their own content. Mm -hmm. That's how you show, show your support. I think uh, I'm not, again, I'm not looking to monetize anything. So what really helps is if people come, they share, they comment. And I learned myself so much from reading the comments, you know, like I've had to correct many times. I'm just like, oh, I was wrong. I'll just take it back and change it. But that's, that's what I'm hoping to uh, see happen uh, if there's a community standard, the atheist community on Facebook, I, I wish they would do that. Well, I, I can tell you this, and and um, I, I, I've been doing this for for a while. I've been blogging with maybe five people reading my blog a day, to um, tens of thousands of people blogging it, you know, reading it per day. And to tell you the truth, it doesn't mean a rat's whisker to me. I mean, I appreciate people and their support, but I will keep doing whatever I'm going to do because that, you know. I, I just have the need to do it. So um, yeah, I, I I don't know what I'm going to be doing on Facebook in five years, but I know I'm going to be doing something like this on some platform. That, that's what and I not, and, and now I have a reason to disagree with you. And it's perhaps because I have lost four or five pages and you haven't yet. Oh yeah, so, yeah. So once you lose these pages and you know you you start from day one, number of users, number of followers, likes zero. And then it's a 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, and then it's gone. And then you're like, Alec, the secret to my success is not being successful. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, it hurts because it's funny and it's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jack, I don't see you stopping anytime soon. You've been doing this, I mean, pretty much as long as I have. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think so. In fact, I mean, with the way things are going, like it, it, I, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily going to be, you know, I think the type of content I'm making is different now, but it's, and I'm putting it in a different place and, you know, the way I'm monetizing it is, is changing. Yeah. But I don't feel like I really need to uh market myself on facebook anymore like so i try and stay away from it for the most part right uh, uh yeah i find myself moving to other platforms or at this point i've got a big enough group of people that you know th there's email lists and stuff that we can get a hold of people that way and well you know my, my perception is you know with with what the temple is doing uh, it's like you're making your own your own platform it's, you know when you look at the mansion right very proud of that. <laughs> the, the, the virtual community, the virtual space that you're making. Um, I think that work is very thought provoking, Jack. Yeah. Because Thank you. You, you. Because you guys challenge in a different way than people are used to seeing. And I find it very thought provoking. That, that's what we try to do. Yeah. 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 So, so, Jack, talk about what's going on next weekend, because this is some really intriguing stuff that the temple is doing. Uh, the, the, the great I can never remember what they're calling it, a, a consortium or whatever, but they're, they're, they're having a conference on moral panics at uh, the, the, the Satanic Estate. Yes. Which is um, going to be um, really fun. In fact, I've got the list here of the, 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 the goings on. Uh, you know, Lucian Greaves, uh, Carrie Poppy, Carl Casarda, Joseph Laycock. Uh, uh, Chalice Blythe is going to give a talk. You know, we just Stephen yeah, Bradford. Well, we've got a bunch of people who are all giving talks over the next or over next weekend's four days. Yep, five days, five days. And, and, uh, and yeah, it's going to be good. You know, one of the things I like to talk about uh, on the morning show or, or whenever I can is how we need more education about these moral panics that grip the country every twenty years or so. Mm -hmm. especially for our kids to know that so that they become inoculated against this kind of absurdity when they get older. Yeah. And getting all these people into one, being able to, to make this, this virtual platform where everybody can go together and feel like they're in 
feel like they're at a conference. Yeah. You know, especially now it's, 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 it's a good thing. I, I just want to mention too, before we sign off is that my girlfriend brought one of her friends up to Salem who was, she was just coming in from New York city and they took the satanic Salem walking tour with Tom with Tom yesterday. Yeah. With yes, yesterday. Yeah. Tom's good. I'm, yeah. glad to see, I'm glad to see he's doing tours again. He was, he was shut down for a good long while. Yeah. Um, he said very nice things about you, Jack, by the way. I don't know what you pay Tom to say nice things about you, but he said that you're a pretty stand up guy. I don't, but I'll send him like a bottle of conditioner or something. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, Alan, you can, the, people can actually see your work or your, your content over at Atheist Alliance International and, um, any other site that they can, they can catch you on? Um, uh, on the godless bulldog, which is the group left behind from the godless primate. That's the only two places where those are the only two places where I still put material up. Uh, everywhere else, I just go comment and read and sort of enjoy other people's works. All right. All right. Well, hey, thanks everyone for chatting in. Um, I'm just going to look at a private chat from, um, oh, wow. So, hey, yep. Um, Daniel just uh, gave me a uh, message in the chat saying he wished he could come in, but he can't. He's got some stuff going on. As a dad, I understand yep. Daniel. Dad stuff. Dad, dad stuff. stuff you are always on call. You are always on call. Mm -hmm. Can I get a last word in for oh, future ideas? Right. Okay. Uh, there's a great group called uh, uh, Atheist Feeding the Homeless. They've just changed their name, I think, called Atheist Alliance Helping the Homeless. I know a number of people who are involved in the North Carolina uh, chapter, Raleigh chapter. Those are some great people to get on the show, perhaps in the future, or give them some exposure. Uh, it's one of those things where you have atheists basically demonstrating good deed in a community and that always resonates well. That's, you know, I, I sort of say that the work that uh, I do by putting out memes and comments is comedy yeah. to some degree, satire, cause sort of uh, various political review statements, but what they do is really more valuable and uh, that's how we as uh, and, and and satanic temple does stuff like that too as well. Which is I, I, I've, I've worked uh, I've worked with atheists older than the homeless a couple times because uh, my friends with TST Colorado have paired partnered with them uh, a time or two for yeah for trying to to do stuff like they had yeah. a big campaign for homeless vets uh, yeah. over the winter. You know, can't hear anything. Yeah. Hey Daniel, how you doing? You're back, sir. Huh? Oh, now he's gone. And now he's gone again. <laughs> well, all right. Well, all right. <laughs> That's us signing off. Take care. Thank you. Uh, back tomorrow morning doing the show at 9 a.m. Open room at 10 a.m. if you want to pop in. Alan, thanks again. It's great having you on. Is Daniel coming in for the last word? Daniel, you're here for the you are here for the last word, sir. We'll see. Is this working? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear us? There it goes. Hey. Excellent. Sorry, folks. Kid <laughs> called. E is Easter. I got joint custody, so it's one of those kid missed it. me and he just talked my ear off and I wasn't kind of expecting it. <laughs> sure. So we're just wrapping things up, Daniel. Do you have any last bits of wisdom about managing Facebook, being an atheist and, and running a, a page? So, okay. So I would definitely, here are some key things that I have learned, especially since I spent almost the entire 2020 in Facebook jail. Mm. <laughs> I think some of people have seen some of the screenshots of all the 30 day bans that I got in there. And it seemed like Facebook was just finding every excuse in the books to throw me in the Facebook slammer. So one thing I can say is if, if you tag somebody or anything, anything that you tag, do not say anything defamatory. If you're going to give them a piece of your mind, do not tag them. Just leave it kind of almost an open air comment because that seems a, that's what triggers the algorithm um, and be very careful using nouns. Mm. If that, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, you know, anything that's very specific, because if you say, you know, effing Christians, effing this, effing that, it's, it's going to get you. That's good. That's, that's jail or worse. Yeah. Facebook yeah. jail. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get the Zucker punch. So those are things that I've learned. Um, you know, it, it's also really hard to judge um, 
what they are and aren't going to hit you for. I've had memes that it got reported as being nudity, and there's literally nothing nude about the picture. I mean, like, literally, yeah. everyone's fully clothed. There's nothing going on in there. It's just obviously the Facebook algorithm does not check. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just going to, if so, if you're, if you're going to get mass reported, you're doing, you know, you got to do what you got to do. That's one of the reasons why, as I said, before I had to jump off, I had been moving uh, a lot of trying to set up the platform that I have on uh, www.thescientificatheist.com. Um, have been trying to kind of move stuff there so people could still talk, make their profiles. Uh, it's, it's a lot more social media like versus, you know, like um, a blog. It's not a blog kind of setup. It's you could post stuff. It's, it's a forum. Yeah, that's what it is. And so we've set it up more forum like um, we do have articles on there, but they're they're not like, you know, Andy's stuff from Patheos. Um, they're a little different. Um, but the uh, the other stuff is, as I said, you could post your own stuff on there. You can interact with other people. You can make your own profile. Um, it's still rudimentary. It's no, it's it's not like Facebook crazy where you can make your own pages and groups. Um, we're still kind of working on that. Um, I mean, it's become prohibitively expensive, but you know we've we we kind of figured that it is worth the cost given what's been happening with Facebook. Um, yeah. My concern is going forward. Um, you know, with the way things have been happening. Uh, we're going to kind of get kind of all thrown in Facebook jail and get thrown off our platform. And th and then we'll, ha we'll be struggling again, like how it was prior to. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, thank you both Alan um, and Daniel. And you know, Jack, I don't think I say thank you to you for your doing the good work for big Satan down there in Arizona. Well, <laughs> thanks. All three of you guys are doing great work. Me, I'm just a uh, uh, chuckle farmer in the, in the acid mines of comedy. So, uh, but thanks. You're, you're, fish, you're fishing for compliments and you deserve it, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, everyone. All right, all right. thank, thank you, everyone in the chat. Take care. Um, and that's the show. Oh, hitting the wrong button. No.